All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, I'm going to take a break today from electoral politics and the total shit show on Capitol Hill to bring you an update on a story that we've promised to never drop here. And that, of course, is how deceased pedophile Jeffrey Epstein was able to operate with impunity at the highest echelons of American society, how he was enabled by some of the richest and most powerful people across the world, and how ultimately this story isn't just about a sexually deviant monster, but it's about the rotten core that lies at the American elite. The Epstein story is kind of like covering the weather. Sometimes it rains, and when it does, it pours. Yesterday was one of those days, when the New York Times detailed the long and unknown financial and personal connections between billionaire Wall Street magnate Leon Black and Jeffrey Epstein. Black, for context, is worth $9 billion. It's not an exaggeration to say that he's a titan on Wall Street, one of the best-known money managers in the world. And while it was known that Black and Epstein had a relationship in the past, which he had even apologized to his investors for, new records actually obtained by the Times show just how deep and dirty that it was. The Times reports that Black reportedly wired Epstein between 50 to 75 million dollars in the years between 2012 and 2017. That is critical because it means all of the money that was wired to Epstein after he was a convicted sex offender in the state of Florida. And of course, the question arises, what was Epstein doing for all of this money? Well, Black doesn't have a good answer. As the New York Times puts it, Black, with his financial resources, could buy the very best counsel in the world. And yet, according to his own spokesperson, he paid Epstein exorbitant sums for advice on, quote, personal trusts and estates planning advice, as well as family office, philanthropy, and investment services. So the Times reporting is once again a view into how transactions between the ultra-wealthy are conducted and the lengths that they go to to avoid public disclosure. In this particular case, the only reasons that these transactions came to light is because Deutsche Bank, one of the sketchiest banks on all of Wall Street, thought that they were suspicious and they had to turn over their reports to New York state legislators who later fined them for their relationship with Epstein. Now, the reporting shows several entities connected to Black wired entities connected to Epstein based in the U.S. Virgin Islands, including, in some cases, nonprofit organizations. But the detail that was particularly caught my eye was this one. Black, while reportedly on vacation in the Caribbean in the year 2012, traveled by yacht to Epstein's private island in the U.S. Virgin Islands for a supposed cookout. That was very same year that these financial transactions began. And in fact, one of the wire transfers that took place between Black and Epstein for millions of dollars actually came from a holding company that owned Leon Black's yacht to the holding company, which owns Epstein's private jet. But 2012 wasn't the first time that Black and Epstein met. No, in fact, their relationship goes back decades. In fact, the Times notes that when Black set up his charitable foundation in 1997, he put Epstein on the board alongside, guess who? Bill Gates, Larry Summers, the former president of Harvard, the current chief executive of Barclays Bank, one of the largest banks on Wall Street. And guess what? Leon Black doesn't deny any of this. In fact, after the New York Times reported this story, he sent a private letter to his investors reading, quote, it is true. I paid Mr. Epstein millions of dollars annually for his work from 2012 to 2017 and confirmed that while on a private holiday with his family, he did in fact visit Jeffrey Epstein's private island. So there you go. One of the most iconic figures on Wall Street just got caught paying Epstein for years after he was a known pedophile for services which are completely unclear and unspecified. He visited his private island where there was known sex trafficking. He acknowledges visiting his private home in Manhattan where we know many of the Epstein victims were held. Again, why is this story so important? Well, aside from sheer shock value of it all, it provides an answer to a clear question. How did he get away with it for so long? We all know the important people involved, people like Bill Clinton and Prince Andrew and Bill Gates and Lex Wexner and now Leon Black. In every case, we get a peek into how Epstein manipulated the system. And the reason that I care so much about the story is because it shows the depths to which the richest and the most powerful amongst us will sink to in order to keep their business flowing as usual. You can literally rape young girls, and if you're rich enough, or at least pretend to be rich enough, then you can not only get away with it, you can also cavort and hobnob with the richest people in the world, and they won't care. You can have them over to the scene of your crimes for a cookout, as long as that cookout is on a private island. 
And a few weeks ago, I covered a very important story here. We got very little pickup in the mainstream media. It was a bombshell report from BuzzFeed News detailing how dirty money from all over the globe flows right through the most powerful banks on Wall Street, how bank personnel have full knowledge of how dirty that money is, and how they literally work with the government to keep their crimes secret and to get off scot-free. As important as I believe the case against Ghislaine Maxwell and other legal proceedings against Epstein are, I think that the key to this entire thing lies much more with the Leon Blacks of the world. Why were they paying him so much money? If we can answer that question, we can get to the root of this entire conspiracy, which literally involves presidents, princes, business titans, and more. Importantly, the more that we investigate and we interrogate the story, you get a full view into how, what, and who these people conduct business with. It turns out we hate the answer. And should we always be reminded of this? Nobody has a right to do business with criminals. How we conduct commerce is a direct reflection of our values as a society. It's kind of incredible to me, you know, Crystal, aside again from the, this guy's $9 billion, there's no reason he needs to pay Jeffrey Epstein like 50 to 75 million. Obviously something incredibly sketchy was going on here. But I think what I'm trying to highlight again and again here is who are the other sketchy people that these people do business with? Right. What is the network of people that are involved, at the, and again, these are you know rooms that we will never enter, rooms that are never reported on, where they take your cell phone, where they make sure that you know nothing that happens there ever comes out, and it only is dribbling out because he was a monster, because he was a monster. But I mean, how many other monsters who aren't pedophiles are around there? Yeah. Drug cartel people, people who are oligarchs, people you know you know Chinese dictators and businessmen and others. Who knows what's happening behind these doors? And I just, I want to show, I'll be like, they will even go to the lengths to do business with him. So who are the less sketchy people that they're doing business with? Nobody knows. I mean, my jaw dropped. Yeah, it's crazy. When it's I crazy. read this story yeah. and be careful, allegedly yes. legal language, et cetera. Right. But one of the reasons why this is such a stunning revelation is because people from the beginning have said like, how did Epstein afford this lifestyle? Yes. It never made sense. It doesn't add up from, you know, he portrayed himself as this like investment guru. Right. But when you actually drill down to like, nobody knew anyone who used him. No yeah. one knew anyone who like worked with him and yeah. certainly not super high net worth individuals. Um, we knew about Lex Wexner, which um, he's a you know billionaire, like head of a, a massive retail conglomerate. Um, we knew that there was like some kind of payments going on there and he sold the New York mansion was sold right. from Lex Wexner at this like ridiculously low Crazy. price weird things going on he there gave him power of attorney right it's, right what yes and now okay so this is another piece of how he could afford this lifestyle and portray himself as legitimately part of this 0.101% global elite which made him so appealing to um, Deutsche Bank as a customer that they actively went out and sought his business even after they knew what was going on and flagged all kinds of suspicious transactions but apparently they didn't care as with so many things like even with this massive global global sex scandal, it comes down in a lot of ways to follow the money, to see how this worked, yes. to see how he was able to get away with it for so long, to see who else was implicated in these goings on, whether they were actively involved or just knew what was going on and looked the other way. And this seems a very important piece of the story. The other part that is always so critical in the story is it exposes just this two tier of, as, as with all inequality in our country, two tiered system of justice, mm -hmm. right? These banks, whether it's Epstein or drug cartels or who, if, if you have billions of dollars, they will happily look the other way and law enforcement will look the other way. Alex Acosta was the Trump labor secretary yes. after he gave Epstein this ridiculously sweetheart plea deal down in Florida where he was like on work release hanging out at his fancy office rather than actually serving down. It looks very much like that deal actually vi was itself illegal and violated yes, it illegal. the rights of the survivors who were involved. So not only like, you know, Epstein gets away with it for so long, he's put on boards, is fed, it is in high society, etc. But the people who enabled him continue to ascend to the highest heights of American power. Well, and that's the thing I want to, I mean, look, this man is going to pay no price for this. Let's be honest. Like, apparently stock hit, took a hit. Okay, it's a one-day story. We all know the reality here. Nobody's actually, if he's, as long as he's delivering funds, 
he's going to be fine. And that's, I mean, he's going to face no consequences. And then yeah. people keep asking me, they're like, is anything ever going to happen? I'm like, yeah, probably not. I mean, this is, I, we have to be honest here. I, I think Ghislaine Maxwell will probably go to jail. The rest of them, no, they're going to walk scot-free. They get away with this stuff all the time. I mean, look at how I had to lay out those wire transfers. Entities connected to black and entities, the holding company the which owns jet. the yacht <laughs> to a holding company which owns this and then bank transfers of philanthropic stuff which which then gets billed to private company. I mean, it's just, it's money laundering. I mean, that's really what it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I'm sure there's all on the up and up and it was 100% tax free, right? No, I mean, this is how they get away with it over and over again. And you can just see through a peak in the Epstein case, that's how you get the Deutsche Bank files. And you're like, whoa, what is going on here? Right. In terms of their internal processes. And, and, and like I said, if this is what they do with Epstein, I mean, who else are these people doing business with? Same thing whenever we got the FinCEN files. You're like, oh, man, you can see this whole... Because that's what we wondered. We were like, how did they get away with this? You're like, oh, this is just... This is like a tiny sliver in this huge system that's been architected to protect and fund and funnel all these people. And the craziest part is the complicity of the government, which is that as they have architected and written the laws such that as long as they file these, cr these fake, like suspicious reports, then they're good. They, don't, they will face no legal consequences. Yeah. And that's the real scandal. Oh, and it's secret. The only reason it even came out is because of FOIA requesting leaks. Same thing here. We only know this because the Deutsche Bank got fined for its relationship with Epstein. Otherwise, you never would have known. So how many of the billionaires are out there that didn't get flagged? Plenty, yeah. I have a feeling. All right, I'm looking forward to your radar next, Crystal.